Hey guys, so this is gonna be an extremely ghetto review. Mark and I are here. We got this great view right behind us here. We're gonna have Dana here do the review of our uh, Friday the 13th part seven review. The new blood. Seven. New blood. Hey guys, so we thought we'd because of where we are right now, we thought we'd do one local. Apologies for the audio. I forgot to bring my microphone as well as my tripod head. Yeah, so, so we had to recruit another one of my yeah. PAs to uh, film this video for us while we're waiting to start our night shoot at Cypress Mountain in Vancouver. So, part seven. This movie is definitely a victim of certain things. For, oh yeah. A victim of the MPAA for sure, but also a victim of terrible act. This is like, <laughs> the worst acting I think in the entire series. It's, it's pretty terrible. It's got absolutely terrible editing for the first half of the movie. Yeah, that's just weird. And then it also has no direction with any of the characters. It sets up all these tiny little things of each of the victims. I, I, and then I honestly just... feel like John Fugler's cut is like three and a half hours long. Like. Like it feels each like one had a character. Yeah, each there's like this whole arc that we just never get told because everything is so truncated in this movie. Oh yeah. Um, All the deaths. There's a death with a fucking hedge trimmer. Yeah. A saw blade hedge Which trimmer. Which is apparently a real thing that I've never seen before. But well, they, that's like, why found I said, man, this movie just cements the fact that really Jason wanted to be a gardener. Like yeah. he at one point puts a decapitated head in and a, a and in a, a planter. In a planter, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's great. Good. Um, yeah, they, uh, the MPA cut this movie to shit. Every single kill, like that could have had potential, got like cut way back. Um, and Jeremy brought up a good point: is that five and seven were both super cut back on the gore, but had nudity. Five way more than this movie. Six so, had almost six no, had nudity no nudity and had a at shit ton of gore. And had way more gore. So, so that's maybe, what I said, man. Maybe, gore yeah. over titties. It was fun. It had moments. It, it, you could tell there was potential for a lot of this movie. True. It's not a good film. No. Uh, it's it's not just a victim of its uh, of the producer and the studio choices. It's a victim of a not a great movie. Oh, uh, we should talk about the fact that this movie fucks the timeline up even more. Oh yeah, apparently uh, it takes place to, in two thousand. Two thousand and one, according <laughs> to IMDb, which makes sense because like whatever we were in in the future previously, because the first four movies are four days, but then we jump ahead like ten years. The timeline for this series is fucked. Uh, wait one second. Jesus, it's, it is recording, right? It's recording. Okay, good. You should leave that, and that should stay. Um, <laughs> there's a little girl in this one who's, it takes place sometime daddy, after no! Jason's gone in, and no, daddy, no, who like kills her dad. Because she has psychic powers. She has psychic powers. Um, I'll get into that in a second. <laughs> but she kills her dad, and then it flash forwards like 10 years, so 2001. And like, it's funny watching this movie, uh, like this movie was released in 88, I think. Yeah. So we're 13 years in the future and like it's literally, it doesn't matter. No, it doesn't. Like it's just, it's, everyone wears the same clothes. It's all 80s contemporary, it's and terrible. Like that car is like, ooh, look at that new 2000s ambulance, ambulance car. <laughs> I make up making jokes about how they should have used their cell phones. <laughs> but uh, not that cell phones are great in 2001 either. No. But probably wouldn't work out at K. Actually, cell phones wouldn't work out there. If that movie was made in 2001, there would be no cell reception. I had a lot of odd similarities between this and what was what was Nightmare Four. Nightmare Four was the one. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, there's with, a lot where of similarities. The Dream Master, where the, Dream it's Master, the powers yes. and things. The powers and whatnot. Yeah, no, that there's a lot of similarities because the main female she has psychic powers. But she's no also one said motherfucker like 13 times like the black guy did in that movie. Yeah, but also she's a terrible actress. Mm -hmm. her, her arc in this movie is and terrible. And much like the nunchuck thing, there's a terrible stunt double when the chick gets thrown out the window and it's obviously oh, yeah. a dude she with get, hairy legs. Well, yeah, she gets chucked out the window backwards, backwards but goes then out she goes forwards. out the window forwards. And it's definitely he goes out that window because those legs look like mine. The stunt team on this film didn't seem to be that that safe with their main no, yeah, they did. Jason. Yeah, Kane, this Kane Hodder has a whole bunch of stories. Oh, first Kane Hodder Jason appearance. Yeah, he's That's big. big. He's the guy. He's he's a stocky dude. He's imposing. He is the best Jason because of, I mean, he's the guy who got to do it the most. He does it seven, eight, nine, ten. He's great in this movie, but you can just tell some of the stunts are like really sketchy and you're like, oh, you guys did a that. A roof fell on him. Yeah, they dropped the roof on him and it's like still obviously him where it really didn't need to be. No, it didn't. Like, it could have been, it could have cut it or something. But he looks to what we were saying before. He, he, this Jason is the coolest looking Jason. 
He's got like bones showing through his legs. He's been underwater for 10 years. Fish have eaten parts of him. After he gets blown up, he's even more broken down. He's yeah. more corpse-like. Yeah, like they, a real we, they do a cool look. effect where, is, where she psychic powers his mask off and we get to spend a lot of time and with Jason. It looks like he has like a look. broken jaw. Yeah, it's like a super cool prosthetic. Yeah. Um, and then they set it on fire and they yeah, almost they, killed the, him. 40 second fire burn. Yeah, they like it's. It's an. This movie has a lot of cool stunts that might be been a little dangerous. That were dangerous. That were like <laughs> this shouldn't have happened. But it's still. It's. It's not the greatest. All the characters are terrible. And they, and they throw characters in like out of nowhere. All of a sudden, there's more characters. But it's not. As far as I know, oh, yeah. it's not one of those movies that where they like went back like eight months later and shot. Or not eight months, but like weeks later and shot no. a bunch of deaths. Like it seems like everything was fairly. There's a lot cohesive, left on the cutting room. Floor. But yeah, yeah. But it, some characters just like show up, like the black couple, just like literally like, Where just they come from? shows up in one scene. Yeah, no, it's not the best of movies for sure, and it's definitely it, there's some cool moments, but it definitely is hindered by the fact there is no gore. Uh, Julie, Melissa, Melissa, Melissa. Yeah, she's an absolute bitch in this movie, and you're waiting for her to get fucking axed, and she, she does get gets axed, axed in the head, and that but you don't see it. Like, you don't really see much. Uh, it's got a cool prosthetic piece that you kind of see half Howard yeah, when and he then he throws her over the, the TV, TV. Which I gotta, I gotta. To say I don't know how to talk there's this whole thing I was watching the Camp Crystal Lake documentary the Crystal Lake memoirs they talk about that actress being dead repeatedly and it seems by a little bit of research that she is not dead um, so I don't think she's dead but it's weird because like that's kind of strange it's to, not on like to, any mention of anything and it like, just seems like the move that the, the, when did the, the researchers the, for that yeah when documentary, the documentary came out uh, it must have been after 09 because that's when they said she died well, you thought was someone would have like called the family. Yeah, you think be... someone would have sorted that out maybe a little bit, but it's really fucking weird. I guess weird. you, you kind of don't want to call, hey, we just wanted to make sure she's dead, right? I guess you couldn't really do that. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of it. Like, even like, there's a few deaths that you're like, they build up for so long. And then the death's almost nothing because it got sh fucking chopped to shit by the it's, NBA. It's, yeah, it sucks too because... Jason is literally throwing every, he's pulling all of these gardening tools out of his ass. Like some, like when the, all of a sudden we hear a vroom vroom vroom, I was like, no, wait, did he get a chainsaw? And it's like, no, uh, it's- long, spinning, circular yeah, it's saw. Thing. Circular it's saw hedge trimmer. It's like, that's even more bizarre. Where did he find that? That's hilarious. I would say the Jason part is definitely a solid yeah, part. Yeah, you this can tell why Kane kept getting the role. Like, he yeah. fucking gets it. It's awesome. I mean, he's a horror icon for other than just this. Some of the effects with the whole psychic stuff is decent. It's terrible at first. <laughs> um, and that's the other thing, too. We talked about the editing. The jumps in the cuts are oh, just, God, just awful. And sometimes they will cut back to things and then cut away. It's just like, what was the point of that? It seems that the first part was done by a very inexperienced editor, and then it actually starts to, to meld together a little bit better. But it's, it's yeah. a very interesting movie in terms of all the issues that happen with it, the how it's put together, how terrible all the acting is, and the prosthetics. The prosthetics are really good. Well, he, but John, the John Buechel guy, like he's a special effects guy. Okay, well, what do you, what do you, what's I'm the score for this? I'm gonna give this a two. One? Yeah, I think two's about right. It's not as terrible as five. No, but uh, it's a big step down from six. It's a huge step down from six. It's unfortunate, but the Jason is at least a step up. And like we said, C.J. Graham was fucking phenomenal, but. Kane took what C.J. Graham started with the motions and all that, yeah. and he kind of made it his own, and he made it great. So I'm I think just, Jason yeah. is the only reason this movie gets a two. Is Jason nine about him becoming a gardener? <laughs> no, it's all on the stupid boat. I fucking oh. hate this movie. Jason takes a yacht. <laughs> Jason takes. A yacht. Anyway, that's our review for all Jason right. versus. Hope Carrie. you guys enjoyed our little scenic movies. review, and we'll see you guys for uh, number eight. Nine. Eight. Yeah, you're right. Eight. Yeah. Fucking right. four more of these. Fuck. Uh, <laughs> Ha <laughs>